Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to do a summary on the experiment we did on the previous video where we had four coins and we tossed them and we had 16 different kinds of outcomes. So let's summarize what we did in the previous video over here. So we had four coins, we tossed them, there's 16 different outcomes, 16 different arrangements of heads and tails. So n here represents the number of coins tossed. So in this case, n would be equal to four. n sub one is the number of heads, and n sub two is the number of tails. n sub one and n sub two define the states of the macrostate that you could have, the different kinds of macrostates. And notice the relationship between n, n1, and n2 is that the number of tails equals the total number of coins minus the number of heads. So that's the relationship between those. Heads and tails here are simply a representation of two energy levels. Now, obviously, with coins, heads and tails are not really energy levels. They're just representation of larger systems we're going to look at later, where the numbers are extra astronomically high, and we have to have that concept of how to do this. So typically, when we have large number of entities, they will fall in different energy states. So here, throwing coins and having them come down at heads and tails are simply representation of two dinner two different kinds of energy states or energy levels. So we let n sub j be the number of entities in state j. So in this case, we have state j, j being 1 or j being 2. And then n sub j then represents the number of entities, the number of coins that fall within each state. The macrostate of a system, so here's another way of defining the macrostate. The macrostate of a system or configuration is specified by the number of particles, entities, in each of the energy levels of the system. So in this case, we could either have heads or tails. So each macrostate is defined by how many of each of the entities will fall in one state and how many will fall in the other state. Even though there may be many arrangements in which that can happen, those are then the microstates. A macrostate is simply the number of entities in each of the states, and we don't care about which ones. Now, the number of microstates for each microstate is defined as W sub K. So remember, there were only one way in which four coins could turn out heads, and so that means that in the first microstate, there's only one combination, so therefore there's only one microstate for that particular macrostate. When we had W sub 2, which represented three heads and one tail, there were four arrangements that could make that happen, therefore four microstate in that macrostate. The arrangement of two heads and two tails, which was the, more, the most probable state of them all, the most probable macrostate, and therefore there's six microstates where we can have two heads and two tails. In the case of one head and three tails, there were four microstates for that particular macrostate, and finally for all four being tails, there's only one microstate for that particular macrostate. Again, there were five macrostates and a total of 16 outcomes, and those then represent the 16 microstates belonging in those five macrostates. The total number of microstates defined by capital letter omega can simply be defined by adding the number of microstates for each macrostate. So if we add all those numbers together, we get a total of 16. Those are the 16 total outcomes or the 16 microstates. Two energy levels defined by J equals 1 and 2. Four particles defined by N equals 4. So you can see that there's five microstates, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each of the microstates is defined by the total number of entities in each energy level. So for energy level number 1, there's 4 here and 0 in energy level number 2. So that would then present a microstate. It's simply defined by the number of entities or particles in each of those states. The second macrostate is defined by having three particles in energy level one, one particle in energy level two. Of course, with coins, we mean heads and tails, but we can define them, we can have them represent energy states or energy levels. Macrostate three, two in energy level one, two in energy level two. Macrostate number four, one entity in energy level one, three entities in energy level two. And finally, the fifth microstate, zero entities in one and four in energy level two. And so that's how we define microstates. It's simply the number of entities or quantities or atoms or electrons or photons, or whatever it may be, in that particular state versus how many in another state. And that's how we define it with statistical thermodynamics. So hopefully by now we have a clear understanding of the basic principles of statistical thermodynamics and how we use the notation and how we use the verbiage, the definitions of microstates and macrostates to understand how we're going to do that over large quantities. So 
Now let's move on and let's see some more realistic examples of how we use statistical thermodynamics. That's how we do that.